Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Misty Valley by Gremlin Games. It's a two-player game that takes roughly about 30 minutes to play and is for ages 10 and up. In the game Misty Valley, you're going to be playing as one of two tribes. Either you're going to be playing as the rabbits or the foxes. And your objective is to explore Misty Valley and obtain the resources therein. Utilizing your tribe's tiles that give you unique workers that will basically give you resources, and you're going to discover resources and place these guys out. You have a limited number of these tiles that you can utilize and a limited number of these locations, and as the location deck runs out, so does the game. Eventually, when the last tile from the location deck is emptied, the last player will get a chance to place out one more of their tiles and then you're going to check to see scoring. Whoever has the most characters on each location will score that location and depending on how many locations and what types they have will score you additional points as well. The player with the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Let's talk, take a look at how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To set up the game Misty Valley, the first thing you do is select which of the two factions you'd like to play as. There are the foxes and the rabbits. Uh, you can then also select which of the two sides you want to play as. There is the basic side, in my opinion, and the more advanced or more aggressive side. After that, you'll take a certain number of these tokens here that are both double-sided, black and red, and you will place them on your left-hand side of your board. You're also going to take your active ability tokens and you'll place them on the right-hand side of your board in the spaces provided. There are three different uses and each of them are individual and have their own unique benefits. Go ahead and then take the two different decks or stacks uh, for each of the players. You're going to the blue for the red player, or the blue for the rabbit player, and the red for the fox player, and shuffle them and place them face down next to those players. There are two also additional decks that you're going to be setting aside and shuffling. There's the location deck and the feet deck. Go ahead and draw two tiles for the uh, location deck and place them face up adjacent to it. Place the main tile, which is the blank tile, with the fox and rabbit placed on top of them. And then take two tiles from the top of the deck and place them on opposite ends of that tile. If one of the or more of the different tiles have little feet, take a feet tile and place it adjacent to that tile. You should have up to two, maybe three or four additional tiles placed on the board. From there, the youngest player goes first and they're going to select one of the tiles to place down and have the game begin. Once you have selected the first player of the game, each player will draw three of their tiles into their hand. And now you're going to be left with one of two options on your turn. Take one action and there are two actions. Action one, to take one of the tiles in your hand and place it face up on the table connected to one or more tiles that are connected to the main tile on the board. These are basically uh, uh, objective gainers. These, are, these tiles are gonna have little foxes or rabbits on them with each side having a number of your specific type of clan. When you take one of these tiles, you can then place it adjacent to one of the tiles and then based on the foxes that are connected to that tile, you'll determine if you gain control of it. If you have the most characters, uh, not the same, but more, you're going to actually gain control. Take one of your markers and place it face up on that tile location. I have two foxes and they're connected to the crystal. Thusly, I can place my marker on the crystal, symbolizing that I currently have control of it. This can change throughout the game. Once I've played one of my tiles, I'll simply draw a new tile from my deck. The tile deck is limited and once you run out, that's it, so be aware. The next action that you can take instead of taking one of your tiles and placing them out is to select one of the locations. When you do that, you'll take one of the face-up locations or from the top of the deck and you will place it adjacent to one of the tiles. Any tile will work as long as it's adjacent. Once you have placed it, you'll check to see if you have any puppy feet located on that location. If you don't, then you're simply going to be done. You'll reveal the next tile if you had to remove one and place it face up so that there are always two that would be available in the pool of tiles to take. If however, it was a puppy feet tile, you will actually place it down and then you'll take one of the puppy feet tiles, um, the, the actual, actual tiles as opposed to just puppy feet on them, and you'll place it adjacent to that tile that pl you placed out that had the feet on them. Once you have placed that out, then you would be done and your turn would be over. There's also bonus actions in this game, other than just the main two. The first one is placing one of your tiles, the second one is taking a location tile and placing it out, and if it has feet on it, take a feet tile and place it adjacent to it. The main action is you can move your leader, these guys here, you can choose if you're playing as the fox to move your fox, and you can place them on any of your little clan tiles. 
This, or, or sorry, locations that you can currently control. This is going to symbolize that you have an extra bonus worker there protecting it. So instead of just two foxes, if I move this guy over to this location, I now have three guys protecting it, thusly making it more challenging for the rabbits to control. And the same is said for the rabbit character as well. The rabbit will get one, and this will give a plus one to the location that the rabbit is at. Another bonus action you can take is any of these actions that you have on your game board. You can choose one of these actions and perform whatever it is. So for instance, reinforcements can be placed on a tile that has your workers on it and give that one specific area that it's pointing to an extra two workers to protect that area. Or maybe there is counter order where you can actually move one of the tiles that has your workers on it and place it somewhere else on the game board. And then finally, there is the spyglass. This will let you take either a puppy feet tile or a regular tile and you can place it down on the game board, thusly giving you more area to control. When you use these tiles though, you simply flip them over and they're done for the rest of the game. Each of these can only be used once. However, the uh, different action with your little clan guy, your main leader, he can be used once a turn as many times as you would like every single turn. Uh, and that's the basic idea of the game. You'll keep going back and forth, choosing to take a tile from either your stack or the location stack and placing it on the grid here until this stack of locations runs out. When there are no more locations left, the player after the player who put one out is going to take one final one of their clan tiles and place it down on the board, in which case you're going to score. When you score this game, there are different values that you'll score, and it's actually described pretty well in the rulebook as to how you're going to be able to score. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that a single location is worth two points. Uh, there are a bunch of different resources, and if you only control one of them at the end of the game, they're worth two. If you have two of those resources, you will collect uh, six points, and if you have three, you'll collect 12. If you're able to control a location that has a little puppy feet tile on it, it has one little like statement mark, that's worth five if you actually uh, own or possess that specific requested area at the end of the game, five points there. And then for the larger one with two is worth uh, seven points. Uh, additionally, for each of the uh, different actions that you have that you don't use at the end of the game, they're worth two points as well. Oh, and another thing to mention too is for the setup of the game, almost forgot, but two tiles will actually start off of the grid when playing the game so that each location there are generally speaking uh, three of, there might be less now because you've pulled two off, kind of making the game experience different every time. Either way, that's how you play the game. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, so a few caveats for the game. Caveat one, which I just explained, is when you start the game during setup, don't forget to remove two locations from the stack here before you place them out. This is a way to make sure that players don't know which two locations may or may not have actually up to three different locations in the stack. Another little caveat too is that there are different sides to these game boards which will change uh, the different actions that you can take. Instead of actually the main ones which are placing down reinforcements or moving your own characters or drawing from these tiles and placing them out, now you might be able to cover up your opponent's spaces, you might be able to move a resource tile, and so on and so forth. Each of them are explained in the rules and uh, they have also additional little tokens that you can utilize. There's also an expansion to the game if you want to add it. There's a small little expansion that has to do with uh, wall tokens and flower tokens. These are going to be added whenever you're revealing the re uh, locations, the resource locations, and placing them out. You'll take one of these guys out and it'll form a marker and you'll score additional points in that way as well. This game is all about area control. It's about all about kind of controlling the environment and placing down your specific uh, tiles with your characters on them and having more characters on each location than your opponents. There's another cool little rule to the game where if for some reason you place all around an empty space, that space there is going to be protected, meaning it cannot be, uh, nothing can be placed in the middle here. And thusly, it's kind of like locked off. So if you don't want your opponents to gain control of an area that might have a lot of resources on it, you can kind of block that area off and protect it from somebody being able to score a ton of points and it being very difficult for you to counteract that. Uh, otherwise, in this game, it's pretty straightforward. Take one of your tiles for control, or take a tile to add to the resources, the abundant resources in Misty Valley, to try and secure even more at a later date, thus allowing your opponent to kind of come back at you. Uh, the game is a pretty straightforward area control game, or resource management game. The resources you're managing really are the tiles that you have, because you have a limited number of these guys here. And when this deck runs out, you have to be aware that if you do not have uh, any 
if you have additional tiles that you did not utilize and your opponent doesn't, they probably have an advantage in the game. Another thing to note too is it's very, very important that you control the same type of tiles. If you have one of every tile and one person has three of one tile, they're probably gonna be doing a lot better. So you have to kind of acknowledge that like, it's more important to specifically pick your battles in this game, especially when it comes to the areas that have requests. Those requests can be a, quite a lot of points. You can secure yourself a ton of victory points by having just the required amount. As opposed to two points for a tile, some of these tiles can score you up to five or even seven points if you just have the requested things they want. And also knowing that, you can kind of attempt to sacrifice some actions to prevent your opponents from controlling those areas at the end of the game, thusly removing points from them and keeping them from winning the game. The artwork for the game is excellent. It's cute, it's vibrant, it's easy to tell what each of the spaces are. It's easy to tell where to place the pieces and like what your opponents are trying to do and how many characters they have. The actions, the abilities are easy to use. They're understandable. You know what they do based on the symbols on them. And then it even has an extra reference to them and a name. The game comes in four different languages as well, so it's not necessarily language independent, but it's pretty close. And the only thing you actually need as far as language in the actual game, other than reading the rules, is the different little actions. But they are pretty much stated on, on the board here. Uh, this is a wonderfully easy game to teach. It's really simple and fast to set up and to tear down and once again play again. We played this on our live stream and there is a ton of variation that you can select and choose to ask you on how do you want to play your locations and whatnot. The one thing I will say about it is that it's a challenging first move always because do you want to play to control what is currently there on the field while it being very limited? Or do you want to provide more resources on the game board, but then let your opponent have the option to place? And if you do, it's very likely that they're going to place and then score or have more areas to control because of the location that you put out. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, also, the other little negative that I have to the game is uh, the backside at advanced or, or maybe just more aggressive abilities. I'm not sure how it's explained in the rules, but the other side of these guys have really aggressive and kind of countering type of abilities where I do one thing and then my opponent has another ability that kind of counters that. And it doesn't work as well in the free flowing aspect of the game. I personally prefer, prefer this side, the, the side that lets you place out reinforcements to the other side. And you can see even watching my playthrough of the game that I like a really annoying because it leads to some feel bad moments. It doesn't matter when you lose, it just matters about how you're feeling as you play the game and it doesn't do as good of a job as it does on the front side of this. Otherwise though, this is a fun worker placement area control style game. I mean, you're placing out workers just to control the little areas, I suppose. Maybe it's not necessarily a worker placement because you don't get actions from them, but you gain control. They're control markers that attach to the game board, thusly controlling areas. It's fun to move your workers, it's fun to utilize the actions, it's fun to see the area and board grow, and it's a simple yet thinky game that only plays two players. So you're constantly deciding on what the best action is and seeing as you play the game what choices you made that didn't really come in handy and how you can improve. And each game that you play with players might start off a little one-sided because the player might understand this more, but as they learn the game, it really, really comes tight. Our last game on the stream, we got, we were like two points away from each other. I also do like the fact that you can re you remove tiles, which changes how you're thinking about what tiles are available, and you're not like constantly like, oh, it's likely that this next one's gonna come up because they're missing a few. And the fact that you also have these little expansions that you can add to the game that add just a little extra variability, but nothing that really overcomplicates the game or it takes away from the main focus of placing down workers or new locations. It's light, there's not a huge amount of tiles and resources that you're gonna be going for. The board never gets larger than it ever is. It's never gonna be added like as far as what I have here. And so it's a really quick, straightforward game. 30 minutes is guaranteed, especially after you've played it once, but it's still a fun time. It's a thinky time. It's a one-on-one -on -one kind of back and forth, choosing one or two actions and then a few bonus actions as you go along with even the cute little meeples being there and available to you to kind of protect locations. Overall, well done, looks great, feels great, and is fun to play. It's thinky, but not too complex. And so this game is really, really fun. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description. And of course, checking out the live stream to see how we played it. And if it's something for you is a suggested opportunity that you can take, I'll have that down below as well. But yes, Misty Valley, it's a solid, fun two-player area control game.
Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Misty Valley by Gremlin Games. If you're looking for the game, there'll be a link down below in the description for the campaign. And if you're watching this a little later, then there will hopefully be a link on the campaign where you can go ahead and pick up the game. And of course, you can check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. In fact, we did play this one on our last Sunday, and you can watch that or just check out the link. And the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. If you really found this useful and you would like, you know what? hit that subscribe button and of course the bell notification button as well it greatly helps us out we do greatly appreciate it and you can see more games just like this one games that you might not have seen before or heard of and gives you an opportunity to check out some new games in the industry all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to controlling misty valley but not with you next time